So you want to learn how to play Japan in Hearts of Iron 4? Sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. We'll be starting in 1936 with Historical AI and Iron Man mode on, and we'll be playing a mostly historical game. There are some meme strats, but we'll talk about those later. And when I say mostly historical, what I mean by that is we will focus first on taking out the Chinese, the Allies, and then I'll leave the game open to you. You will be more than powerful enough to do things on your own. And what I mean by meme strats is well, there are ways to take out the big bad United States in 1937. I'm not gonna go into those. If you wanna see me do videos about that, let me know. It might lead to some nice achievement guides again, but we will focus on a basic beginner-ish guide for Japan. And let's start at the start, obviously. But before we die for the glory of the Emperor, I wanna thank today's sponsor, PUBG Mobile. I actually play this game a lot with my work buddies, so I am excited to get more people interested. Now, PUBG Mobile is one of the most popular free mobile battle royale games in the world with 50 million active daily players, me among them. Now, you can play solo, duo or squad in battle royale mode or in one of its 10 other game modes such as Weapon Master, all in the palm of your hand. Now, the game has regular collaboration with some of the best IPs to create some really cool skins and customization options for your character and weapons, uh, like Evangelion or The Boys. And you can now come and check out Livic, the official new map available only on PUBG Mobile, which was added in May of 2022. And you can face 51 other players in this small, dynamic map with various minigames. Treasure maps are hidden everywhere in the game to find exceptional loot. And along with the treasure map, you can find upgraded weapons and chests. But watch out for the explosions of the volcano. It might get spicy. Now you can support the channel and check out PUBG Mobile via my link in the description below and maybe we can outrun the ring together. Research. We want to do our basics here. Just your engineering, your construction and production. Now that leaves us with one slot. And depending on what type of game you want, you can either go Navy. One downside of Japan is they're lacking in naval tech and mostly sonar. So you'll have a hard time dealing with submarines. So if you want to play more naval game, I recommend you get at least least passive sonar here. That will allow you to get some better destroyers so you can hunt some subs. If that's not your cup of tea, you can go for the infantry stuff or you can go for tactical bombers. I would not recommend you go and get yourself fighters, which is very counterintuitive, but Japan has an excellent way of getting this airplane, the Zero, ahead of time through its focus tree, and it's a lot better that way. So that is what we'll do here. Now, I like Navy. I don't play a lot of naval games, so I am just going to go and get myself some sonar. For construction, as always, we start off with civilian factories in our highest development provinces. Now, if you feel uncomfortable with the amount of military factories, factories Japan starts with, feel free to build some more after the initial run of civilian factories. I find that personally, I don't need them. But if you feel uncomfortable, be my guest. Now, let us ramp up our production. We'll need some artillery. We'll obviously need support equipment. We'll need guns, a lot of guns. The tanks suck, so get rid of those. Interwar fighters, we don't really need that many fighters to deal with China. And we'll be making zeros eventually. So I'd much rather make something else, like CAS, downside of CAS is, well, check out the air zones that there's, yeah, it's, it's not great here. So instead of fighters here, we'll just build some close air support. And we have a bunch of ships here in production. The Congo class. I like this one. I finish it. Carrier hull. Just finish the one. Converted cruiser. We don't need it. It's pretty terrible. Cruiser hull. Sure. Finish the one. And the early cruiser. Get rid of it. There's not enough invested and it's a pretty terrible design. And that leaves us with a bunch of destroyers. Just finish a single run of each of these. And down here we have some pretty bad submarines, but they're mostly done. So finish them as well just the single one. And that is the basic setup done, I believe, except for trucks and trains. Trucks will be needed because obviously supply in no step back. Same for trains. Japan doesn't start with a lot of trains, which is unfortunate. China is pretty big and will need a lot of trains. Now for the military, let's just group everybody up here. We have 60 divisions. That's pretty good. Could be better. Let's organize things. We have 15 of these good-ish infantry templates. They'll sit on 
their own. Then we have about 30 of these pretty terrible infantry templates and 15 fast units and some marines split off the marines. We'll need more. And these tanks. Now, these tanks are utter trash. Look at that. That is not a tank template. So I'm going to get rid of these and turn them into something a little more useful. And I'm thinking either use these because they're cheap and they're good fodder or turn them into this. But considering the amount of guns we're already lacking, I'll just turn the tanks into something. Eh, I'll just take this. The reason I'm not deleting them is we have 60 divisions. If we train one more divisions, I can send more units to Spain, which is always a good idea. Anyway, I'm going to train up three more Marines. Marines are pretty good for Japan. I am also going to, what is this? 33, that means I need 10 plus five, I need 15 of these. And that leaves us with a bunch of cavalry. I like the cavalry because of the speed. I'm gonna train a couple more of these, like 13 to round out that army as well. Trust me, we will have plenty of guns. Don't worry about that. Just gonna put all of them under a field marshal. I'm not gonna assign generals, not yet. I'm just bringing everybody home to the home islands just to make supply easier. As for our navy, pretty huge. We're not gonna manage it. We're just going to group everybody up under a single admiral, assign them all to a single fleet and let Yamamoto sort it out and the fleet can exercise. We're gonna burn through fuel, but we'll need a little bit of Navy experience. That leaves us with the Air Force. Just group everybody up in Tokyo and we'll sort them out later. Decisions, naval treaties, we're not gonna bother. Political actions, we're not gonna bother. Same for war propaganda or the Soviets, not worth it. We could commandeer civilian trains. We get 15 free trains at the cost of five stability. This is temporary, the stability loss recovers. I don't think we need it. That 5% is gonna be useful in terms of factory output, political power gain, etc. I don't think we need this. Resources, no. This is very interesting. Inter-service rivalry. You'll be able to prioritize guns or ships or whatever, really. It's a balancing act here. If you do nothing, you play a normal game like any other country. If you prioritize steel for guns or steel for ships, you get more dockyards or more military factories and increase the output of the related factory you're getting at the cost of reducing the output of the opposite type of factory, if that makes any sense. Just read the tooltip. Now to the focus. Says the historical path here will be to purge the Kohoda faction. We're going to do that and work our way down here towards spiritual mobilization, extra manpower to compensate for some of those earlier focuses. One thing we're going to sidetrack here is we're going to rush down to national mobilization law, then take the research slot. Research slots are great. Then nationalize the war industry and continue to spiritual mobilization. That's my four Marines. I'm going to assign, where is he? There's one very specific general. I always Always use this guy commando he'll be training our marines and i'm gonna exercise these guys as well and from now on we'll just prioritize fresh troops reinforcements can wait we're not at war doesn't really matter Oh, one thing you might want to do is set garrisons to high priority. Otherwise, you might have some trouble with occupation laws. So we're going to ignore armor. Japan's really not suited to it. And we're mostly going to ignore air. We have close air support. The next level of CAS is too far away. And we'll get our airplanes, our zeros through the focus tree. What we will need is artillery and infantry. And if you like the naval game, I recommend one or two slots on naval stuff, mostly to get the 1940 cruiser ahead of time. Also through the focus tree. All right, the Navy's got a bunch of experience. We can send them back to port. We're burning through oil. And we're going to create the two ships that will carry the naval run here. First off, heavy cruisers. We'll take any of our heavy cruisers. It doesn't matter which. And what we're going to do is make this entire top row rapid fire guns, light cruiser batteries, the best kind we can fit. And as many of them as we can fit on here. All of these light gun batteries. Then down here, left corner, this gun determines the type of cruiser you have. The cheapest medium battery you can slap on there. Just for cost saving, that's it. We don't need anti-air. We do want fire control, the best fire control we can fit. We don't need radar or sonar. We'll fit in the best engine we can and the best secondary gun we can. And we're going to remove the armor. We want a fast ship that does a lot of light damage. It's very important to check up here that it will be a capital ship. I'm not going to explain the naval meta in detail. There's videos out there. Just know that this ship combined with very cheap torpedo cruisers will win almost any naval battle due to the way these guns 
target the enemy. So we'll keep making these heavy cruisers. We'll upgrade these as we get more tech. I want the light battery, the cheapest one out there because we have to put something on there. I want to put a good engine on it. There's going to be engine twos for the ship we'll need. Good torpedoes. And if we can get it unlocked, I also want sonar in this slot. And that's it. Not nothing else. These will serve to one, protect those heavy cruisers we'll be making. And two, these torpedoes will finish off enemy capital ships once our cruisers have wiped out the enemy screens. I'm quickly splitting off 11 of these infantry from this guy's army. So he has four divisions. Uh, these four will be sent into the Spanish Civil War. But political power, we are a little bit past the mark, but we are going to get the silent workhorse that is going to increase our PP gain even more. We always want more PP. We are going to send nationalist Spain some volunteers. We can send four divisions now. If you don't build new units, it's going to be three. And we'll also send air volunteers, about 180 of our airplanes. And we're going to send them over. They should say yes. And then we'll just split off some units here, some air. I am such an idiot. So I accidentally sent my Marines. What I meant to send was these infantry units. Ah, that's bad. Okay, I'll just convert these to infantry, I guess, and convert these to Marines then. Of course, we'll need to swap generals now as well. What we want is for just general to one, get skills, a skills such as infantry leader, organizer, some terrain traits like mountaineers, pretty helpful, urban assault specialist, it's okay, not great. Hill fighter, very helpful in China. And trickster, just grind these traits by by getting this guy into combat in the relevant scenarios. Just read the tool tips to see what you need to do for these. What we also want is for this guy just to level up. And what we need here is army experience and air experience. The earlier you can get it, the more valuable it becomes. Anyway, we have some more political power. I want to show you a neat little trick. If you're playing naval game, go to the officer core. This is a no step back feature. You go to the spirit of the Navy here, the center one, and you get flexible contracts. This makes it much cheaper to design cruisers and just get very cheap naval designers. Needs 35 army experience, easy as Japan. Next up, we go here, ship designer. Japan has a really good one, the coastal defense fleet designer. As you can see, it makes your capital ships a lot cheaper at the expense of making them do less heavy attack, doesn't matter. Have less range, doesn't matter. And have less armor, doesn't matter. None of these negatives matter for the way the current meta works and the production cost is just so delicious. So you want this one, you really do. Now we'll be cutting most of the Spanish Civil War because it's not very relevant. Air crew surveys for cheaper doctrines and the second one is usually centralized control, fighter detection, and air mission efficiency. After that, fill out the doctrine. Uh, you can pick whichever really. My favorites are battlefield support and strategic destruction. All right, that's the extra research slots and three more focuses to go. And I'm gonna put that slot to work on the industry. We got 100 political power. Let's get the infantry expert. Infantry is always good. This gets us some army experience early on as well. Army experience, like I said, very, very important. The earlier you can get it, the better. Let's get the concealment expert. I'm going to make a few changes to our templates. These are the guys currently fighting and I want to give them a little bit of an edge. Uh, I'm going to turn them into something I like. They're not perfect, but they're fine against the AI. And I'm going to replace the cavalry recon with support artillery for now. We should have enough artillery to make this work for the divisions we have. That is the first change we're making. That should give our units in the Spanish Civil War a bit of extra bite as well. Now our initial batch of factories is finishing up, so we're just going to build some more civilian factories. Now it's January of 1937. It's a good time to start on our intelligence agency. This is one of the best things to be added for Japan because it means when you go to war with China, you can start doing collaboration governments. Well, you can do them ahead of time and it means you don't have to walk all the way to Chongqing and beyond. There is no supply past Chongqing, but there's more China. That just means with enough collaboration governments, you don't have to walk that far and it's going to save you so much headache. Trust me. I usually get is cryptology and the first two texts here, then the unfortunately named pills. And then I work on army department, economy and air force. You do you. What you want is five levels, at least five levels to get our second spy. And I just usually start with cryptology. Getting ciphers unlocked is always a good bonus against enemies. Okay, it's June of 37 and I just realized I forgot to press 
record. So I've been talking for what, 20 minutes to the black void? Uh, quick recap of what I've been doing. We've worked our way down to spiritual mobilization. We've started liaison conference all the way down to Marco Polo bridge incident. As for our intelligence agency, we are now decrypting China. The plan here is to build a spy network and get ourselves at least two collaboration governments so we don't have to walk all the way past Chongqing. It's awful enough as it is. Our units are recruiting. We have plenty of them in the field already. We'll have everything finished by the time war with China starts, at least we should. We have 48 of these trashy infantry and I've made one change to them. I added engineers so they have a bit of entrenchment. I want these guys holding the front lines for now. The reason I'm recruiting so much cavalry is, well, one, I like fast units and two, it will allow me to level up this general towards combined arms expert. I just really like using trucks for Japan and we'll take our Marines. This guy is going to start a naval invasion from Nagasaki and hit the port here at the very tip of this peninsula. And the guy up here with all his cavalry, we're going to take three horses, start a naval invasion and hit the tile here and another three horses. So that is the full 10 of our invasion capacity used for the tile below that one. Once you've done what you need to do here, you can back off to conserve equipment or keep playing. It doesn't matter. The nationalists are going to win. Now, one thing I hate about these aircraft carriers is how the wings are organized. So I'm just going to slap naval bombers on all of them. I'm going to pick up anti-air as well. All right, so we have one army on the border here. I'm going to take our second army of infantry, uh, the really shitty ones. I'm going to park them behind that first army just so we don't have too much on the border so China is tempted to actually attack but we have reserves in the back to fill in should China overwhelm our units because they're really not good units but they're good enough to hold that line all right time for the greater East Asian co-prosperity sphere it's our faction and then one more focus so 140 days before we go to war as for East Hebei this is where I'm gonna deploy all of my casts I don't have all that much here just yet but we should have enough to make a difference Cast and fighters should be fine. A level six airbase, eh, make it level seven and... Okay, so we've got two spies. We're immediately going to send them off. Operations, prepare collaboration. Government commence when ready. Resume and just send the spies out. We want at least two of these. Now our next pick in political power is going to be the elusive gentleman. So we have three spies. What we do with three spies is to keep one in China maintaining or building up the spy network with the other two spies performing the operations. That way we don't have any downtime between operations because when they're doing their little collaboration government this network is going to deteriorate back down to zero again and we'll need to build it up for the next level it's a little time saving feature all right the faction is created marco polo bridge incident there we go focus finishes the marco polo bridge incident we'll get some war support we'll get our annex war goals downside is we're gonna have a massive penalty against china so we'll need to fix this before we start our offensive we We'll be able to do just that so we'll just declare war on the chinas and we're not gonna call our puppets in we want to keep this front nice and narrow mankuko is garbage manchuko is just larger garbage so don't get them involved continue on with the focus tree now the stuff down here is locked presently we don't really need anything now we are going to work on getting ourselves the zero which means new naval estimates and then fighter modernization all the way down to the zero now you see china is immediately going to go gung-ho but this line should hold if you see red bubbles you can always move reserves in our next stage of the operation will be to hit here open another beachhead so we're going to send out our marines along with those cavalry units to cover the flanks and the navy here will be on naval invasion support marines are storming the naval base cavalry is storming the other tile if we can get landed here there we go what we do here okay very important one unit goes there one unit reinforces the marine attack and one unit reinforces the northern attack. And that should be everything we need to get going. Should be able to get a beachhead here. Oh, I'm going to hit force attack. This is going to be very expensive, but I really, really want to take that tile. I really want to take that tile. To the north here, nothing happening, really. All they're doing is throwing themselves against my line, just leveling up this general. That's all I need up there. Just leveling up that general. But I think we're going to make it unless they can really 
recycle a lot of units in here really quickly, we should be able to make it. Oh yeah, their org is dropping like a brick. Oh, good lord, man. China just keeps funneling more units in. Just look at that. How many units are they stacking in that tile? So if you are unable to take both tiles at the start, it is risky to hold on to this position because you can get pushed back into the port and immediately lose those divisions because they will not be able to withdraw out of the port when they're in combat. I think I can risk it. I'm still going to try and take the base here. Yeah, I'll need to pull out. We're not going to hold against those numbers. If I had taken that tile, everything would have been just just fine. Uh, but as you can see, we're losing all of the combats. Uh, I'm going to wait until this forced attack wears off and we're pulling out in three days. Just getting everybody back home. So I'm just going to pull everybody out. The Marines can hold off the enemy for a while and now we pull out of Dailan. Overall though, our losses really limited. China losing a lot more men and more importantly, equipment. They're burning through guns up here. And I have completely forgot about this. Press this button. Press this button like your life depends on it because it does keep pressing this button whenever it becomes available. That's one of the reasons I just lost that. I should have pressed that button harder, faster, stronger. All right, let's try another naval invasion. Oh boy. Yeah. China's got the coastline covered already. The days of easy naval invasions, I'm afraid, are over. Well, in that case, I'm pulling the cavalry back to the home islands. Apparently they are trash and they'll never get to land. It's okay. It's okay. We don't need them. I'll, I'll deploy them later. The Marines still have a chance if I use them well. So we're going to try this again. From Nagasaki, I'm going to hit this place once more. If at first you don't succeed, you know what they say. And then we're going to take some of these boys, the good infantry. These guys should be able to pack a punch still. And we're going to try our initial attack again, just using actual good units. And we'll escalate the war in China again. Just keep escalating. Now we have air superiority. We have naval bombardment. We have actual good units making the naval landing. Maybe this time we'll be able to establish our beachhead. I didn't assign troops to the northern naval landing. <laughs> I'm going to get myself killed. All right, this was exciting, but it's done now. We've got our beachhead. We can push out from here. The units should definitely be capable of fighting this out. There we go. And done. Okay, so we have enough front line to hold here. I'm going to keep the Marines away. I, I need them elsewhere. We're going to try and make another beachhead. So I'm going to pull those back to Nagasaki for now. And I'm going to pour the rest of the good infantry onto that front line. And we'll bleed them here as well try and push out a little in future. It must be one of the worst parts of fighting China is they never stop attacking you. All right, with China grinding us on more fronts, let's also take this infantry, the reserves, and upgrade them to Hohe Shidan. We're a couple of uh, equipment short, but not too much to be really be concerned. Look at their equipment losses going up. The manpower, we don't care about manpower losses. There's always more Chinamen to be found. And let's push out in all directions to get a good foothold here. Oh, I hate this. I hate the way the AI can play the game and everything is going just fine. Should be able to get everything to land now. Yeah, that's our foothold established, I think. The north is always going to be the slowest approach, mostly because of the amount of units they've stacked in a very, very shallow front. Narrow front, I mean. But once you break through, it's easy going. They really can't stop you. And once we take Beijing, the north is going to be open as well, because that is the local supply hub. All right, we got the French cipher. Let's get the UK cipher next. When fighting in China, focus your efforts on taking supply hubs. Oh, looks like we're about to meet in the middle here. That's good. Hurrah! The front lines have met. All right, let's just mop up this mess and then we'll just redraw the front. Something a little more clean. Again, don't call your puppets in. They're worthless. All right, I'm going to delete this unit's order, draw the field marshal line all the way and integrate this infantry with the field marshal. The field marshal now has three armies at his command and he can keep pushing towards central China. Oh, after the Panay incident, you'll get this event. I usually just agree to the American terms and our cavalry leader is now also a combined arms expert and it means I can make him a combined arms spy. Specialist. I'll hire him later. Well, so far, all of the Chinese miners, except for Shibe Sanma, are involved. And it's just going to be a matter of pushing China to its breaking point. We're going through them like a knife through butter. We don't even need encirclements. This is just the Japanese meat grinder. 25,000 Japanese and we have murdered over a million. Well, maybe not yet a million, but a good number of Chinamen are gone. All right. And we have been able to link up with the cavalry army. So the 
front line grows even longer. We've not taken all that many equipment losses. Most of our equipment is positive or is growing. And there we go. Horrific losses for both nationalists and, well, everybody else. And we're just going to pass a bunch of times. And we're going to take all of the land. Because of our collaboration government, we get good compliance in all of China. Because all of China is a core to the nationalists. And for some reason, it applies the compliance to, well, everything that is a core of the nationalists. So we'll just take all states. Beautiful. And December 24th, 1938, we have defeated China. And that concludes part one of our glorious struggle. Now in preparation of the future, we are going to set up a couple more things. First off, we're going to put an infantry army on the border with France here. And the goal will be to push down here. Now, realistically, they, they really won't do much because then we'll take our other army of infantry, the bad units, and we'll put them on the border here with the Raj. And maybe we can spare a couple units for the north. About six units up there should hold. We're also going to train up another 24 units of basic trash. These will serve to protect the home islands should harm ever come to us. It will be very unfortunate that we weren't looking. All right now we're going to have a chat with Germany. We want to join their faction. So we're going to delete our own faction. We can always remake it later and ask to join the Axis. Of course, they'll let us in. We're going to take all of our ships and we're going to sail them right over here to the port below Hamburg. We're going to move all of our cavalry here as well, along with all of our Marines and the remaining infantry army. Once we have the zero, we're going to start producing those. As for construction, finish up the Chinese railway network because this is garbage. Most of this stuff isn't even hooked up, so it annoys me. And I tend to just plug the supply hubs into each other so there's at least some semblance of a supply network in China. And what we're also going to do is build military factories from this point onwards. We have all the civilian factories we need, along with all the resources we're going to need. So this is just fine. I also don't need to upgrade Shandong anymore. The Dong has been secured. And I'm going to start trading for aluminum and rubber now. And with agility focus done, we get the zero. Early 1939, so we're still reasonably ahead of time in terms of technology. I'm building a spy network in the south of the United Kingdom and to the north of France. We won't be able to get collapse here, but we'll, it will help our invasion, our initial invasion. And pretty much what we do now as an Axis member, we are just going to wait for Germany to kick down Poland's door and we're going to use that to immediately join the war. We are going to invade northern France, knock out France. That should give us full occupation as well. And then we are going to go straight for the United Kingdom and go for the throat, if you will. There we go. We can put that into production. Might as well just upgrade the engines a little bit, get ourselves a good airplane good fighter. It's a carrier fighter, so its range is a little less, but it's well ahead of time and it's actually a really decent airplane. Plus, it is well ahead of time still. Now, in preparation of the inevitable war with France, I have set up my five Marines. Three will hit Dieppe, two will hit Le Havre. That leaves me with five more units to use, so I will be using, obviously, motorized units. They can hit the hardest and the fastest, so we'll set up more invasions to the flanks. Amiens, three units there, and two more trucks to hit some Somewhere else. Thinking this tile here next to La Havre, just to land along a broad front, take the ports and push towards Paris and the northern victory points and France should fall with ease. And if you're going for the achievement with bicycle battalions, it might be worth actually making sure to capture Corsica as well, mostly because this will not flip to you when France capitulates. Playing as Japan, if you're going for an aircraft designer, you could get Mitsubishi. That's the, the basic one that you, you tend to pick this one for agility. If if you're playing a naval game, this might actually be a good choice. It is a good bonus to carrier fighters, not as good as Mitsubishi, but it's also a good bonus to your carrier naval bombers, of which you will have a fair number. So if you're playing a naval game with carriers, this is a good option. I should have picked Mitsubishi. I misclicked because I am apparently an idiot. Both options are viable. The Navy has been split into two parts just to uh, prevent stacking carriers. Uh, five is too many. Four is the number you want. But if he got him into two fleets, it should be be fine and we're gonna naval invasion support the English Channel and the Eastern North Sea and with a little bit of luck we'll be able to make that initial naval invasion work. Don't forget for the fleet to turn off automatic split off otherwise the entire navy will go back to port if one destroyer gets hurt and 
and I wouldn't set him to engage at high risk. The, the Royal Navy is huge and the French Navy thrown into the mix might see you outclassed. So let's keep it at medium risk. And there we go. Germany is doing its thing. There we go. We'll now join the war. They should say yes. Slow the game down a little. We are in. We're going to set off our naval invasions. Looks like we got green seas. Perfect. The Air Force will support. Now let's go back to Asia. We'll take Hong Kong. We'll take Guangzhou and we will launch an all out invasion of French. What is this? Southeast Asia? Everything is moving according to plan. Perfect. Just like that, we've taken the port of Dieppe. Pause the game. I'm going to take all of this good infantry that we've parked here in Germany and we're going to send them over to France. Same for whatever fast units we have remaining. We're sending everybody over to France now. And for the duration of this naval invasion, I'm going to set the Navy on convoy escort in these two sea zones. Now we might get in trouble if we run into the Royal Navy. We might not. We'll see. And having landed, we are now going to go for a little field trip. We're going to take as many of these local victory points as we can and we're going to rush for Paris. Well, that was easy. We've, uh... <laughs> We've taken Paris and there goes France capped easily, very, very easily. Now you can see we don't actually get Corsica. So if we were going for the bicycle achievement, we would want Corsica. But hey, there's better ways to get that achievement. Anyway, now we just need to mop up on the mainland and we can prepare for the next stage of our operations, which is naval invasion from Dieppe straight across into Dover with Marines supporting, of course. All right, as for the Navy, we're going to pull those boys back. Don't want to risk losing them now. So we'll set them to naval invasion support in the English channel. They can wait there until everybody's ready. Once you get a foothold in the UK, it's usually over. They really, really don't have that much. Now, when fighting the UK, if you really want to meme it, what you do is simply encircle London and take the rest of the island. That will give you the maximum amount of war participation you can realistically get. Now, I find it a bit of a cheesy meme strategy, but hey, some of you might like it. Plus, I know it works very well. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to give it a go. I think we found the Royal Navy. And here you can see that heavy cruiser strategy at work. We sunk a massive chunk of the Royal Navy here. Two carriers, six battleships, six, no, eight light cruisers, 28 destroyers, three battle cruisers, and all it cost us was a couple of our naval bombers. Most of the work here was put in by... Where are we here? Our heavy ships? No, our cruisers. This is the work. Our cruisers did so much damage here. Killing blow, killing blow. Most of this was our cruisers. Oh yeah, it was definitely a very good fight. And I think that's the rest of the Royal Navy we just sunk. Oh, I love the naval game for these reasons. Oh, we're just dunking on them. Ah, there we go. Poland has capitulated. Some good news. Now take on, take on the low countries, Germany. Go on. Connect. That's Belgium. Let's overrun Belgium. I've got my Marines in position. Oh, for the love of God, Germany's going to walk into London here and ruin the strategy. Unfortunate, but we still have the majority of the participation, so we should be fine. The Dutch East Indies are involved in the war. I think I... Yeah, should be fine. It's unfortunate that Germany does that, but it is what it is. Let's just speed things up. There we go. End of the war. And we can really take what we want. We are the big dog in this peace deal. And we'll start by taking the good stuff first. And that is World War II finished. Or at least it should be. Oh, for God's sake. As you can see, the Netherlands is now a major. Anyway, at this point, your Japan can do whatever it wants to. What I usually do is then build up Labrador by increasing the infrastructure here, increasing the supply, making the naval base as big as it can be. And I use this as a staging ground to attack Canada and eventually down into the United States. You can also get a Caribbean base to do the same. We can integrate Nation Francaise and the British Empire to take their fleets. Now we did sunk a good portion of the British fleet, but they still have 208 ships left and France 152 ships so that is a good deal of ships we can still take usually World War II is over at this point but for some reason Belgium the Netherlands were not involved in this peace deal I have 
No idea why, it is what it is. Ah, there we go. And we're still at war with Australia for some reason. So, okay, sometimes the peace deals don't make any sense. Anyway, I'm going to call it here. The rest of the wars will be trivial. If you want to help Germany defeat the Soviets, you're in a perfect position. You are the beast in the East. Or if you want to take on the United States of America, the big bad end boss, you're also perfectly poised here just to strike from Labrador or from one of the Caribbean islands, naval invade or walk across the land you're in a perfect position for both this is the ultimate japan if you want to see me try and take on the united states leave a like and if we can get to 2000 likes well i'll give it a try i, I never invade the united states because it's very very tiresome anyway if you love this video I'm sure you'll like the next one too see ya